Hello everyone, this is Painting of the Week. I hope you all had an excellent Easter. I've almost almost finished all of my chocolate at this point. And we're going to be talking this week, uh, we're getting back into specific paintings now instead of these sort of general discussions on various artistic topics. And we're going to be discussing Winslow Homer's Prisoners from the Front, which is probably my favorite uh, Civil War era painting. All right, so this was painted in 1866. So post-Civil War, really, and what we would refer to as this Reconstruction period. And historically, of course, during this, this era, this time period, right after the Civil War, tensions among blacks and southern whites still ran high, right? So artists from this period addressed this issue through these confrontation scenes like we see here. So here we have a, a meeting between a Union soldier, a Union officer, and then a group of Confederate soldiers. And the Confederate soldiers are, of course, over on the left-hand side of the canvas. There's three of them. And we know that they've surrendered because their rifles are scattered on the ground in front of them. And we have this Union officer facing them and various Union soldiers who appear to be occupying the background of the canvas. Now, notice, first of all, the barrenness of the landscape here. During the Civil War, trees would have been cut down to not only clear a pathway for the advancing troops, but it was also used to provide a steady supply of firewood. So you can see how the landscape here in the background has just been completely ravaged by this, this battle that's recently been fought and this location. Now, the three Confederates are interesting because they're of different ages and they have different physiognomies. The soldier on the far right stands defiantly with his hand on his hip. He's glaring back at the officer. And then we have this old man in the middle who's probably the most submissive of the three. He has his hands folded in front of his waist. And then the soldier on the far left appears to be the youngest, and he also looks worried. But there's this effort to affect this sort of nonchalance, as if he doesn't want to show his fear, and he's stuffing his hands in his pockets to try to hide that. And despite being a confrontation scene, it's somewhat surprising, and then it really downplays, actually, the, the distinction here between the victor and the conquered. Homer has painted all of the soldiers on level ground, for instance, so the Union officer here is not you know, physically located any higher on the canvas than any of the Confederate soldiers, as if to convey this idea of superiority that we would typically see in a confrontation scene. In fact, notice that that horizon line there with the sky passes directly through the heads of all the soldiers, Union and Confederate, in exactly the same place. So this painting becomes less about, you know, sticking it to the south and more about the progress that's to be made now during this period of Reconstruction. And in fact, we can take that even a little bit further and discuss the gaze that we see between the rightmost Confederate soldier, who we said was sort of glaring defiantly at the Union officer, and the Union officer is now looking back at him, right? And we see that both men are approximately about the same age, and this mutual glance that they share is almost conveying this idea of understanding as if, you know, they see where one another is coming from, which once again reinforces this idea that we're now entering a period of reconstruction, a period of, of national healing, as opposed to this upplaying, this distinction between victor and vanquished. Now, to the right of the Confederates are two Union soldiers who are standing guard, but notice that the one in the back is only faintly outlined, and in fact, he wasn't even present in the original composition, which can be determined um, using x-rays and some different sort of scientific forensic techniques. But his face is very blurred here in the, in the final painting, and the bottom of his left leg is completely missing. But what's most interesting about this figure is that the darkness of his skin seems to suggest that he might actually be a black soldier, which could then be Homer's way of representing the African American's contribution in winning the Civil War. Now this is going to require a small uh, suspension of reality because blacks and whites, it's true, would have fought together um, inadvertently, right, in the heat of battle, but the blacks were segregated into separate units. So they wouldn't have appeared together with whites in post-battle scenes like the one depicted here. But nonetheless, we see that Homer has done that. And 
to, to explicitly paint a black soldier like that in this canvas could have generated considerable backlash amongst critics. So perhaps he then defaulted to this sort of shadowy outline as a way of subtly reinforcing the role of the African American in the war, both as not only soldiers who were fighting with the North, but also as the moral justification for the war in the South to begin with. So we have this sort of shadowy figure of a, of a Union soldier who may be African American, and of course the irony here is that he's painted subtly to avoid this potential uh, racial conflict, whereas the subject matter and the theme of this painting as a whole is this restoration and this amendment of racial tensions toward this new unified nation where racial prejudice is no longer such a source of division amongst Americans.